Parks, I think it began. Rosa Parks, some of you know who she is, was often referred to as the mother of the civil rights movement. She was a black lady who on December of 1955 was arrested because she would not stand up and let go of her seat to a white man on a Montgomery bus because at that time the segregation rule said blacks should give their seats to white people. She said no. She was arrested. She defied the rule of segregation. And her action, her fearless action, led to make that rule of segregation unconstitutional. When she was asked, how did you have the boldness to do this? Rosa Parks answered and said, it was about time that somebody would stand up, in my case to sit down, and I refused to give up my seat. Rosa Parks was a fearless person who brought a great action. Her motto was doing what must be done does away with fear. And I think that's the same motto of our friend, the man described in our text, Caleb. Caleb comes from the Arabic قالب قلب مع أنه ترجمينا كالب هي قالب in other words كالب the man who's all hearts كالب الذي كله قلب because indeed that man had a heart that was fully dedicated to follow the Lord he was not exactly your cold hearted Laodicean man. No, he was a man of noble heart, fully and fearlessly a man of a lion heart, a man who was all heart. So I want you to think with me about Caleb, how much he was all heart for the Lord. Many appear to have no heart, don't they? Somebody said they are like corporations. They're only heads, boards, and members, but there's no heart. You hold the man's hand, it falls into your hand like a piece of ice. You talk to him about God, he's not impressed. You speak to him about Jesus, nothing stirs him up. These are people without a heart. No heart. Just brain. Head but no heart. But thank God there are many more others who are all heart. The moment you mention the word of Jesus before them, they tremble and begin showing emotions. Thank God for people who have a heart, who are whole heart for God. When they sing, they're singing like the angels, the myriads of angels declaring the gospel to the shepherds in Bethlehem. When they pray, it is like the wrestling of Jacob at the river Jabbok. And when they serve, they apply the motto of Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, which should be our motto if we're truly all heart for God, which says, whatever you do, do it what? Heartily as to the Lord and not to man. Linas. Caleb was that kind of a person. He was all heart. All his heart was fully aimed and dedicated to God himself. I'd like to bring before you, if you don't mind in the back, I'd like you to be, pay attention. I'd like to bring before you three things. Three important things that can describe Caleb. As we're trying to imitate Caleb, it's good that we decipher what exactly Caleb was about. The three important things that can describe Caleb. First, I'll talk to you about his faithfulness in following God. Secondly, I'll talk to you about his reward because he followed God. And thirdly, I'll talk to you about his secret character that enabled him to follow God. So three things 
May God give us to understand this man and imitate him, a man for our time called Caleb. First, I'd like to point to you Caleb's faithfulness in following God. Caleb, what, what did he do? Uh, could you turn with me to uh, Numbers 14, 24? He followed, I'm sorry, here it is. It says, he has what? Followed me fully. It didn't say he went ahead of God. A lot of people would like to go ahead of God. That's called presumption. Those who leave the fiery pillar and become their own guide will soon find themselves in the fire with no guide to get them out. The people who say, I want to be ahead of God. Don't do it. I want to tell you the greatest point for a believer is for him to follow God, to walk with God. That is the highest point you can ever reach as a believer. Never go ahead of God. Caleb never went ahead of God. He followed God. He walked with God. As God led, he followed and he followed. And I want to tell you, a good soldier would follow his general, would never go ahead of him. And a good disciple would follow his master and never go ahead of him. And the sheep, a true sheep that belongs to Christ, would never go ahead, but will always follow Christ. John 10, 27 says, my sheep know my voice. No, my sheep hear my voice and they know me and I know them and they John chapter 10 uh, verse 27 and they follow me my sheep hear my voice I know them and they what follow. they follow me a true sheep of Christ will follow Christ but you know what many of us will follow Christ will follow God but very few of us will follow God as Caleb did. You know how Caleb followed God? Numbers 14, 24, it says, it says, Caleb, because he had another spirit and has followed me. Would you read that word with me in the back, please? He followed me what? Fully. Excuse me, what was that word? Fully. Full, would you underline that in your brain? You see, this is the whole secret. Many will follow God Many of us will follow God, perhaps once in a while, perhaps from a distance, like Peter, perhaps once in a while, like Saul the king, but very few would have the gold medal of Caleb by following God, what? Fully. fully. I'd like you to know that that word fully is the whole secret how you will get the greatest reward. Fully. What does it mean to follow God fully? Let me tell you what it means to follow God fully, what Caleb, how he followed God fully. To begin with, he followed God fully by being respectfully to every detail. He followed God fully means respectfully to every detail. He did not say, I will perform this job, but not that job. There are a lot of people who say, you know, they're nitpick. Yes, I would follow God and obey God, but not in everything. But Caleb did not say that. When he was sent with those ten not-so-good spies, he did not say, I don't want to serve with them. He went along even with people who are not as good as he wanted to see. When it was time to fight giants, he said, I will fight the giants. When it was time to hold the clusters of grape, he still held the clusters of grape. So many believers would nitpick and choose what is easy, but when it comes to something that's difficult, say, oh no, I don't want to do it. But Caleb just went and was respectful and obeyed God in everything that he commanded him to do. He followed God fully, means respectfully, in every, every detail. And I want to tell you, if you have a servant who obeys your commandments partially, that servant is not really your servant, he's your master. I want to tell you that partial obedience is no obedience. In fact, partial obedience is radical disobedience. If you are following God partially, you are disobedient to God. 
Many times people excuse themselves from following God fully. You know what they say? All those things that he asked me to do are not important. Have you heard that? I mean, after all, I'm following in the important things, but the, these things are not that important. How do you know it's not important? When God gives a command, is there anything called small and medium and high command? Or are all the commands of God commands of God to be obeyed? Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example of baptism. Many people say baptism is not that important. How do you know it's not that important? Didn't God command us to be baptized? Don't you know that in baptism you're actually witnessing about the fact that you died with Christ and you rose with Christ? What a beautiful drama that God is asking you, command you to do it once. A lot of people say it's not that important. I'm following God, but not in that part of the command. Let me tell you, in the Old Testament, any Hebrew who was not circumcised was what? Was cast out of the congregation. After all, it's a small thing, but it was an important commandment. Small things like big things are all commandments to be obeyed. And I want to tell you, in the Old Testament, any Hebrew who did not partake of the Passover dinner, the angel of God will come and smite his household. And I want to tell you, not only in the Passover dinner he had to partake, but in every detail of that Passover dinner. You see, he could not eat the lamb raw. He had to eat him roasted on fire. He had to eat him with bitter herbs. Every detail is as important as all details. When we obey God, we need to obey him fully, respectfully of every detail. And that's what Caleb has done. And I want to tell you, partial obedience will bring always disaster. I don't want you to open to that right now, but read it at home. In 1 Kings chapter 13, there's a story of a prophet who was endowed by God to do prophecy. And he went and prophesied. And after he prophesied, you know what? He disobeyed God in only one portion. He was not supposed to go back and eat at Bethel and drink at Bethel. But he, when, as soon as he did that, he was eaten by a lion. And I want to tell you, partial obedience is no obedience. Partial obedience is radical disobedience. The Pharisees had partial obedience. The Pharisees were people, according to the Lord Jesus, who tithed. You know what tithing means, right? In other words, they paid 10% of anything they had. In Matthew 23, 23, the Lord Jesus said to them, Woe to you, O Pharisees and scribes! Because... You have partial, Matthew 23, verse 23. Because you are partially obedient. Here you go. You pay tithes of mint and dill and cumin, and you have left undone the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. You ought to have done these and not to leave the other undone. You Pharisees are partially obedient, therefore you are disobedient. God never blesses partial obedience. God only blesses full, respectful obedience of every detail. Every commandment of God is as important as any other commandment. And I need, if I am to follow God fully, to follow him respectfully in every detail. I want you to ask yourself, as we're progressing today, is there any matter in your life you're not completely obeying God in? May God give you today to make a decision in your heart, say, I have not been obedient from here on. I will be fully obedient, respectfully of every detail. Secondly, Caleb followed the Lord fully. That is, not only respectfully of every detail, but fearlessly. No matter what the cost is. One of the tests, whether or not you're sincere, is found in your willingness to suffer for the cause. When it comes to suffering, you'll know if someone is sincere or not. I suppose the 12 spies that were sent by Moses to spy the land had a meeting before they came back. They said, let's meet. What kind of report are we supposed to give? They met like the jury. You know, have you ever been a member of a jury? Before they go back to meet, the judge say, okay, what's the verdict? And I think of the 12, 10 said, 
This is the verdict how it should be. We're going to say that the land is good, is full of milk and honey, but we're also going to say that the land is inhabited by giants. We cannot occupy it. They will eat us. But Joshua and Caleb stood up there and said, No way. The land is good, but also we are able to possess it. And when it came down to give the verdict, we only read of Caleb who stood there alone and said, I disagree with you guys. I want to tell you how much that probably cost Caleb. How much ridicule. When you are in a situation where all your peers are disagreeing with you and you stand up for alone for the Lord. How much is the cost? But he said, I don't care what the cost is. I'm going to give the report according to my heart, according to what the Spirit of the Lord told me. If the Lord sent us to occupy that land, we are able to occupy it, giants or no giants. Caleb was fearless. And how many profess to follow the Lord Jesus, but when it comes to sacrifice, they say, oh no. Oh no, you mean there's a cost to follow the Lord? You mean I'm going to be ridiculed? You mean I'm going to stand up in school and speak about Jesus? You mean I'm going to stand in my business and witness? I'm gonna, I may lose business. I may lose friends. So be it. If you are really want to follow the following the Lord fully, you need to follow him fully and fearlessly, no matter what the cost is. I want to tell you, in every church, there's a cross. That is usually placed either in the back or on the side. There's always a cross. But how few are those who are willing to carry the cross of Christ and follow him daily? You know, Christianity is not about applause and being popular and being wanted by every... Christianity is about carrying the cross of Jesus Christ, the cross of shame. I am a disciple of Jesus, the crucified. And therefore, I'm willing to be crucified by the society that I live in. The day is coming when true believers will shine and false believers will be exposed. That day is going to come. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 22, the Lord Jesus says, many will come to me on that day and they will say to me, Lord, have we not done this prophesy in your name, through your name, through our demons, through your name, do many wonderful works. And the next verse says, and then I will say to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of what? Lawlessness. You who were disobedient to me. You who did not obey me respectfully of every detail and fearlessly, no matter what the cost. You who denied me in front of your peers. I will also deny you before my Father who's in heaven. Happy are you if you are one of those who follows the Lord fully, meaning respectfully of every detail and fearlessly no matter what the cost is. Caleb followed the Lord fully. Also fully means that Caleb followed the Lord fully, meaning that he followed him cheerfully. Have you ever noticed that people sometimes when they're following the Lord, they put a very sad countenance on their faces. You know, they look like they're, boy, they're struggling. I want to tell you that those who are not cheerful, they are really disobedient. There is no such thing as uncheerful obedience. Cheerful disobedience. Cheer Sad obedience is actually disobedience because obedience that is not cheerful is disobedience. The angels serve the Lord with songs and joyfully so. They never, you never hear about an angel grudging and grumbling about serving the Lord. And so should we be doing. God wants servants, not slaves. He wants people who are happy to come and follow him. And Caleb did that exactly. I want to tell you, if a man is driven to battle by force, he's not a patriot. It is said about uh, those uh, Navy SEALs that went and accomplished that great task in Pakistan, executing bin Laden there. They say about them that they all went to that very difficult task cheerfully. They said, oh yes, we want to go to that task. And more glory to them because they did it and did it joyfully. And I want to tell you, cheerfulness also brings power. 
to people who want to serve. I like that verse in uh, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. He says, For the joy of the Lord is your strength. If you are cheerful, you have more strength and more power to you. For whom nothing pray for this day, the Lord, and do not be sorry, for the joy of Jehovah is your strength. This is what brings you to be a powerful, strong Christian. And I want to tell you, let me ask you, are you cheerfully following the Lord? Are you grudgingly doing so? I want to tell you, when it comes to things like any sacrifice, giving for the Lord, there are people who only give if they're asked. You have to drag something out of them to give to the Lord. And there are people who look forward to give to the cause of the Lord. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, it describes what the Lord really wants. And how he wants us to serve him. It says, each one as he purposes in his heart, let him give not of grief. Don't be sad when you give to the Lord. When you follow the Lord. Not of ne or of necessity for God loves a what? A cheerful giver. Let Allah yuhib al-mu'til masroor yuhibbuhu al-rab. God is looking for people who cheerfully are following him. And that is truly following him so let me ask you when you come to the meeting do you come being dragged here or do you come because you love to be here you would know if you're truly following the lord fully if you are happy to serve him joyful cheerful and looking forward for an opportunity to represent him and be with his people and to give to his cause caleb followed the lord fully meaning respectful of every detail he followed the lord fully meaning fearlessly no matter what the cost he followed the lord cheerfully at any circumstance and then Caleb followed the Lord fully meaning constantly constantly Caleb kept following the Lord that way fully all his life from his youth and here we hear about him he's already 85 years old and he's still following the Lord that much fully let's read about him in Joshua chapter 14 verses 10 11 and so on in Joshua chapter 14 and verse 10, this is what is said about, about, this is the report from Caleb. He's saying, and now, behold, Jehovah has kept me alive these 45 years, as he said. He was 40 when he went to spy on the land. Now he's 85. They're dividing the land. He's 85 years old. And then, as the Lord spoke to Moses while Israel wandered the wilderness, and now I am 85 years old today. Next. And yet, I am as strong today as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Next. And now give me this mountain, he says. He's a man 85 years old. And he is constantly following the Lord. He says, it doesn't matter how old I am. Give me this mountain. And uh, for you heard in that day how the giants were there and that the cities were great and fortified. If Jehovah will be with me, then I will be able to drive them out. As Jehovah said, verse 13 and 14 says, and Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh for inheritance. Next. And Hebron became the inheritance of Cabal, the son of Jephunneh, the king's eye to this day because he what? Because what? He, f excuse me, he fully followed Jehovah, the God of Israel. لذلك صارت حبرون لكالب بن يفون القنز ملكا إلى هذا اليوم لأنه اتبع تماما الرب إله إسرائيل. This man was a man who did not say, you know what, I'm a little old, I'm tired, you know, excuse me, you know, folks, I want to retire. There was no retirement for Caleb. He was a man who was following the Lord fully, meaning constantly throughout his life and no stopping. And this is how we need to be. And I want to tell you, professors of faith, those who claim that they are Christians, how many of them begin and then they drop out? You know why they drop out? Because they were really not, not Christians. So many will begin with the Lord and then they filter out. They go back into their sinful life, into the world, because they really were not Christians to begin with. But those who are really fully for the Lord, whose heart is for the Lord, will persevere, will continue, and will follow the Lord fully, meaning constantly. I like the benediction that our brother reads many times from Jude chapter uh, verse 24 and 25. 
I like it what it says. Look what it says here. It says, but now Jude, verse 24 and 25. It says, but now unto him who's able to keep you without stumbling and to set you before his glory without blemish with unspeakable joy. Verse 25, it says, to the only wise God, our Savior, glory, majesty, and might, authority, even now and forever. Amen. To him who can keep you. Once you've surrendered yourself to him fully and you follow him fully, rest assured, you will continue to follow him fully and constantly. Caleb was not like that lame beggar that once I heard about this lame beggar who would uh, limp during the day in order to beg. And at night he will take his fake, fake leg and begin dancing with the other beggars who were robbing people on the streets. No, Caleb was not like that. He was not a lame beggar by day. He did not limp in virtue nor leap in vice he walked always the same in every circumstance and no matter how old he was getting Caleb was constant because he was a real believer and I want to tell you the way to recognize real believers from false believers is to see how constant they are in their walk and in following the Lord are you persevering with the Lord are you constant with the Lord do you serve the Lord just at circumstances? Or are you with him all the time? And I want to tell you, if you're not, I'd like you to come and say, Lord, I want to trust you fully like Caleb did. And by that, that I may really be following you fully, respectfully, fearlessly, cheerfully, and constantly. Caleb was that kind of man. He followed the Lord fully. So the first thing we notice is his faithfulness in following the Lord fully. Second thing I'd like to notice with you about Caleb from our reading of Numbers 14, 24. Look at that with me. The reward of Caleb because he followed the Lord so faithfully. Look, my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, he has followed me fully, get a reward. What's his reward? I will bring him into the land into which he went and his seed shall possess it. هناك مكافأة لمن يتبع الرب تماما وقد اتبعني أدخله إلى الأرض التي ذهب إليها وزرعه يريثها There's a reward If you follow the Lord fully rest assured there's a huge reward for you All the people who were from the generation of Caleb guess what happened to them They died Read with me verse 23 if you don't mind the verse before it because it says but surely they shall not see the land who is he talking about all the generation of Caleb they all perished with the plague God smite smit them with the plague they did not survive only Caleb and Joshua survived because they followed the Lord fully Caleb was that man verse 24 it says but my servant because he followed me, had another spirit. I will bring him into the land into which he went and his seed shall possess his. Caleb experienced great deliverance because he followed the Lord fully. Caleb was also comf comforted because he had a long life of vigor. At 85 years of age, he could say, I'm as strong as when I was 40. How many he here would like to say, I'd like to continue the, to serve the Lord even at age 85? Raise your hand. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The key to that, to be, get, to be given that kind of vigor, you have to follow the Lord fully when you are younger. You see, for God to give you that vigor to continue with the spirit of courage, with the spirit of fearlessness for Him, of humility and of holiness, you need to follow the Lord when you are younger and God will give you that. There was a man by the name of Simeon. Do you remember that man, Simeon? who was at the temple when they brought the Lord Jesus to be circumcised at the eighth day. You know, that man Simeon was given by inspiration that he will not depart until he will see Christ. You know, it says in uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 30, Simeon, after he held the Lord Jesus, the baby Lord Jesus in his hand, he said uh, before that, uh, uh, verse 29, Lord, now you will let your servant depart in peace according to your word. Next. For my eyes have seen your salvation. You see, God kept Simeon going because he was faithful until he actually saw the Lord Jesus with his own eyes. And then as an old man who was 
fully following the Lord, he departed. We gain our old saints from among those faithful young ones. If you want to be a old saint that continues to serve the Lord at an old age, you need to be faithful in your young age. And I want to tell you, I envy you young people. I wish somebody took me to an evangelical church when I was younger. In fact, when I was 39 and I found the Lord in the Bible waiting for me on that night of February 1987, my first, and I'll never forget that prayer, it was, why didn't I know before? I wish I started when I was young. Young people, I envy you. This is your opportunity. Don't let it pass by. Grab on. And even us, middle-aged or older-aged people, grab on to what you have now and follow the Lord fully. Follow him and the reward is yours. And Caleb was also rewarded in that uh, the fact that he was greatly honored among his brethren. I imagine mothers... Mothers will hold their babies as Caleb, General Caleb is passing by. And they say, look, look, look at him. Look, they all died except Caleb. And all the kids say, oh, I want to be like Caleb. Everybody was honoring who? Caleb. And when it was the council of the generals of the leaders of Israel, nobody would say a word for Caleb because he was there, the most honored and the strongest one. And I want to tell you, the Lord says, I will honor those who honor me. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. He says, they that honor me, I will honor. And they that belittle me, they shall be very little. <laughs> Be it far from me for those who honor me, I will honor, and those that think little of me shall be highly regarded. I want to tell you, those who will be honored at an older age and become the saints that will be honored in our society and become example to our society of Christians are the ones who follow the Lord fully. They shall have the reward of being exactly honored. Inconsistent professors, those who are you know, wishy-washy will never be honored, will never stand in the presence of those who are honored. And Caleb was also honored in the fact that, that uh, he was given the distinguished role of taking the hardest job, the hardest mission. He stands there at age 85 and he says, give me what? Give me that mountain. You know what was happening in Hebron on that mountain? They were what they call the Anakins. The Anakins were people who had, they were giants who had six fingers in every hand. There were three of them. Six toes in every foot. They were giants with an extra finger, an extra toe in every foot. And nobody wanted to fight the Anakins. But Caleb at age 85 says, give me that job. I want to go after them. And he did. And he occupied Hebron. And I want to tell you, that's a great thing. When it comes to difficult missions... Only those who are seeking great honor would take it. Unfortunately, the majority of Christians shy away when these things are difficult. I love when I hear about our sister, our sister who goes all over the Arab world. She says, I want to go after those who are very much bearded. I'm not afraid. I want to tell you, great honor is only to those who what? Who take the difficult missions. May God give us a fearless heart because it's an honor to be given great honor. Missions And don't worry about straying away. As long as you're following the Lord and close to the Lord, you will not stray and you will continue. And Caleb was honored in the fact that he was, he actually was able to see the land. And later on, he was able, 1424, it says, and his seed shall possess it. In other words, his children possess the land. If we want to see our children follow the Lord, we need to follow the Lord fully. It's a reward from God. That those who follow the Lord fully will see their children come and be drawn to the Lord. May God give us to be like Caleb, faithful, following, following God, and like Caleb being rewarded because we followed God. And last, and I'll close with that, let's look at Caleb's secret character that allowed him and enabled him to follow God. Let's look again to 1424. Would you read that with me, please? It says, but my servant... Caleb, read this with me, all of you. Because he had another spirit with him. The rest is a result of that. 
the secret why Caleb was able to follow the Lord fully in such a manner fearlessly completely constantly cheerfully is because he had what another he had another spirit people say I want to be like Caleb you have to receive a spirit you see it's not a matter of faking it folks or imitating someone it is about receiving something from above if you have not received the same spirit that Caleb received by faith in the Savior in the Redeemer and that spirit is obtained at the foot of the cross at the foot of the cross you come as you are with your sins you lay your sins at the foot of the cross and there is given to you not only forgiveness you know forgiveness is like zero accountants will tell you forgiveness is like you owe something now you owe zero but God doesn't just give you zero he gives you himself his own spirit comes to indwell you and I want to tell you that's the secret why Caleb was able to follow the Lord in such a great way and became the hero and was rewarded so greatly because he had this different spirit and that different spirit is not the spirit of just fervency and cheerfulness it is a divine spirit and when you have the divine spirit in you you will act like the divine people say here's a lamp that doesn't light what's the matter with it because it doesn't have any oil with it in it you put oil in the lamp and then it begins lighting you see oil is the reason why lamps light up take two balloons one which is filled up with light gas hydrogen what happens to it it flows up and take another balloon the same balloon and put in it carbon dioxide it goes down why is it because one gas is lighter and it goes where the lighter gases are and one gas which is heavier and it falls down I want to tell you you will act according to the spirit that's in you so if you want to act like Caleb desire to have the spirit and desire to be filled by that spirit because that same spirit will lift you up and make you to act and react like Caleb I'll stop at that I think we've had enough we all want to be like Caleb don't we and I want to tell you if we want to be like Caleb we need to receive the spirit of Caleb we receive it if you're not following the Lord fully I think the time has come to each and every one of us to say I want to repent because something is holding me down I want to let go of it whether it's sin whether it's a habit maybe you're not yet born again really maybe you haven't received the spirit that will lift you up to want to fly to want to act like Caleb to want to act like Jesus Christ the spirit the Holy Spirit will come down and will change you and make you to want to follow the Lord fully and faithfully and you'll be rewarded greatly and your secret is because you have received the spirit and I want us to bow down before the Lord today desire to be like Caleb by coming to the Lord today repentantly and say Lord Lord something is holding me from following you fully please Lord make it evident to me I bring to you all my sins May the Holy Spirit show you those things in your life that are prevent you from following the Lord fully. Tell him, Lord, I bring them to you at the foot of the cross. Please take them away from me. Cover them by your blood, Lord Jesus. Indwell me by your spirit, Lord Jesus. And bring me today, if you have not received the spirit, to receive your spirit. And if you have received it and you're putting it encumbered with sin, Lord, help me to renew. Start afresh today and follow you fully because this is what real life is all about. A life that will be greatly rewarded to follow you fully like Caleb. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.